Cuties, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you how I built this flooding shelves for my guest bathroom makeover with no hardware, just my little hands. We're going to grab a solid piece of wood, cut it to length, and then cut a piece that is going to attach preferably from the exact same piece of wood. So you want to number them so you know they go together so that the grain maintains and hopefully it will look seamless when you attach them together. And mine is not going to look seamless because it's different pieces of wood, they have different colors, they are different grain, but in theory yours would. I really don't care about that kind of stuff. It's gonna look amazing anyway, so we're gonna go with that. It's very similar to my curtain hooks. You have two pieces, a back plate and a front plate. In this case, there are the exact same width, the exact same size. I cut my support plate or my back brace, whatever you wanna call it, at two inches deep. Um, you certainly don't need it to be this thick, but because I was working with cedar, I was afraid that it might split, it might crack. It, cedar is a softer wood, but in your case, I think one inch should be plenty, maybe one inch and a half. Uh, remember that your rods are going to have to go through that piece and into the shelf that you're going to build. So the thicker that piece is, also the more noticeable it will be through the sides. So cut yours, I don't know, personal choice, I guess. I am using leftover wood that we had from when we built our dining room table. So it is rough cut lumber and that is why I'm planing it. In your case, I would imagine you might want to buy just a piece of common board pine that is already the full length or depth of your shelf. So I guess 10 inches, 8 inches, 7 inches depending on what you're doing and then you would cut your back plates from that. Mine were uh, two by sixes, so in reality that is five and a half inch deep so I ended up adding two inches on top of that from a different piece of wood to make it seven and a half deep. All right, so we're not buying hardware, but we still need something to support the shelf from the front. Um, I had seen a video on YouTube and they were cutting some rods and cutting the head off. I didn't want to do any of that. So I just went to Lowe's and looked around in the bolt section to see what I could use. And I thought this hex bolts would be perfect uh, because they came into like a six or seven inch long. And I thought that was perfect. Actually, it was probably overkill for my seven and a half inch deep shelves. But uh, what Whatever you need you just kind of use your best judgment on that so I decided that I was just gonna countersink the head just like I did on my curtain rods and that should be plenty for my little 23 inch long shelves you need it to be smooth none of that can be poking through the back because otherwise it's not gonna sit flat against the wall Okay, so let's drill those holes. I am drilling a pilot hole first, and then I'm gonna drill uh, the holes so that my hex bolts can fit in. In my case, my hex bolts are 3 8 thick, so I, I'm gonna use a drill bit that is 3 8 to drill the holes, and I'm gonna go as long as my bolts are. So my bolt is a total of six inches deep. So my back plate is two inches, that means I have to drill another four inches deep into my front piece. Let me tell you something. This drill press says that it fits 10 inches. I cannot get it to work for 10 inches deep. I tried, I looked a couple of videos on YouTube and I couldn't figure out if you know how, let me know in the comments. But otherwise you can try just your power drill. I didn't want to use the power drill because I honestly did not trust myself to drill the hole straight. This doesn't work if your holes are not straight. They have to line up perfectly. So I struggled with this drill press. I I used a couple of clamps to clamp the pieces together. The back plate so that I could mark and position my drill bit at the exact same spot. Again, this doesn't work if the holes don't line up, otherwise you're going to have an uneven one taller than the other, a ridge. So for me to make sure that they were perfectly aligned, I clamped them together, I pushed my drill up, I raised the, the bed or the support of my drill up so that I could drill through the back plate and start the hole on the main piece of the shelf. This was a nightmare, you guys. I hated this drill press. But once I had drilled through it, I would lower the thing again, pull the drill bit out, do it on the other side, and then take off the piece as you see me do here. 
And again, I number them so I knew they went together because they have to align perfectly. And then I raised the bed of the drill back up again, up until uh, the drill bit could touch, and then drill down again and again. It was a pain in the butt, but I got it done. don't think that I needed my bolts to be that long. I went with six inch bolts and my shells were seven and a half inches. You really don't need that length. Uh, I think four would have been okay, five maybe would have been okay, but it's entirely up to you. Once you have the holes drilled, it's time to countersink, or you can do either, it doesn't matter when you do it, but you need to countersink the holes where you're going to attach to the wall, and then the holes where you're gonna put the lag bolt. So they are actually on opposite side. I countersink them on the same side on this picture, but they should be on opposite side. Uh, so the bolt needs to fit completely flush, like I mentioned before. So whatever thickness or however big the head is, that is how big you need to countersink. Again, this is what it's going to look like when it's attached to the wall. So you see how we countersink the hole that goes to the wall and then the hole that goes comes from the wall so that everything sits completely flush. I didn't have any studs where I wanted to put this. There was actually one stud. So I decided to use toggle bolts to attach this to the wall. Toggle bolts allow you to put more weight onto things, but there is a limit to that. My toggle bolts hold 30 pounds per toggle bolt, I think. So in this case, I needed to put some heavier stuff and that's why I'm using the toggle bolt. Make sure it is level. Again, make sure that you are checking your pieces that you numbered so that you put them all together the way they're supposed to go. If you drill the holes perfectly aligned and measure everything and leveled everything, it should come together like a piece of cake. Ta-da! It is so satisfying. Okay, that's it. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you're curious as to what this bathroom makeover looked like, I painted the floors, I painted the vanity, I built another hook, I did everything in this bathroom. And you can watch part one and part two of this makeover. Link below and don't forget to comment if you do like it. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me. I post everything I'm doing on Insta on a regular basis, even when I'm not posting on YouTube. But more importantly, don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube. You know the drill. And until next time, okay, love you, okay, bye. Was that you living in someone else's dreams? <laughs> <laughs>